disease we can cure or we can help significantly, we might be a little bit naive. And I'm very impressed about seeing the, the extensive weight loss that uh, some devices can achieve. Uh, nevertheless, we have to deal with factors that we cannot change. We cannot change the genes, we cannot change the age, we cannot change the gender uh, and some other circumstances. Nevertheless, we have available really at least 33 uh, proven uh, treatments for obesity. And if we would combine those, we might have much more success. I'm old enough to tell you that uh, if you staple the stomach, this is a temporary uh, procedure. I, more than two-thirds of VBG I had to reverse, I had to reoperate. that my colleague Emmanuel Hell left me as a heritage. So, we also had a lot of antiluminal procedures, uh, let's say the TOGA, uh, the safe stitch, the endosynge, etc. Those are now removed from the market because those are pretty long enough on the market that they were proven not really sufficient. So why should those devices that we present now better than those what we had already removed from the market? Question. I would like to introduce you our organ that we are treat and we are treating an organ that is on the constant movement. It's not the bone, it's not the stable, it's an organ that when you stitch, the stitch will erode. An organ when you staple, the staple will erode, especially when you have a high pressure. So that, that's the nature of our stomach under pressure. And I would like to introduce you to, let's say, uh, a technique that will adopt this uh, movement. But before that, we should know that if we adopt only the mucosa, it's temporary. This is what we know perfectly from, from open surgery. Uh, we have to adopt the seromuscular part, otherwise it will fail. So, if we adopt mucosa, as mentioned, this is something that is pretty temporary. We have to approximate the seromuscular layer. If not, you will see in endoscopy those uh, anchors, sutures, whatever, will uh, disappear within two or three months. What I present you are special anchors that will adopt the movement. They will adopt the movement of the stomach because those anchors are like your shirt buttons made of nitinol. And that gives you the perfect possibility to adopt the seromuscular layer to create this inflammation which allows you that those anchors are permanent. And when you do your endoscopy two years after you still see the anchors in place. So, Basically, why you apply those anchors, it's, it's a consistent pressure during the healing process. You also can adjust, depending on the thickness of your, of your stomach wall, how you uh, apply your uh, anchors. And it is proven that it is durable and you can place it on, on multiple locations. <clears throat> Uh, Roman Toro will uh, show you uh, after my presentation uh, the video how you place those anchors. I will not uh, keep this this time. I just want to <coughs> have a look at the moment. What do we have in evidence? What, what's what's available on the market that we that we discuss a little bit more scientifically away from our philosophy? And when it comes to Apollo overstitch, it might be a, a very effective procedure as a <coughs> rescue procedure after, after having uh, a bariatric procedure like a bypass and you, you want to uh, 
uh, refashed in your pouch or refashed in your anastomosis. But when it comes to a primary procedure, you will not find a lot of papers. And I met uh, Sandy Brathauer uh, recently in Dubai, and uh, he's uh, actually not very enthusiastic about this procedure, but anyway, uh, a couple of patients, namely eight obese, 18 obese patients for one year with an excessive weight loss of 27% uh, could be published. Other papers you will not find. And as mentioned in my, in my question, when you, when you run from the antrum to the fundus, you cannot close properly the fundus because you are not in an inversion. You, you, you look straight and then you have a pocket where your food stuck, and if the patient is burping, it smells not very nice. Anyway, I, I continue my presentation with something where we have even a, a few papers available and even uh, a few randomized studies also available, and that's, and that's the post-procedure, which I'm very enthusiastic involved. And we have with this device also hormonal studies coming from Spain, uh, because the decrease of breathing is a normal procedure when you eat, when you have food intake. But what, what is impressive, when, when you have this adduction of the fundus, the gradient level drops significantly different compared to the control uh, study group. And also the postprandial increasing of PYY uh, could be demonstrated from, uh, from, that, uh, from that study group. And of course, uh, our, our chairman uh, could also demonstrate that we have significantly weight loss uh, with this device, namely even 40% uh, of excessive weight loss. And for an internist, to, to lose 5% of your body weight is, is an enormous improvement, is an enormous success. And, and we are running around struggling, yeah, we, we want to lose 20%, we want to lose 30% of body weight, which is uh, physiologically extremely difficult, as I, I have shown you in, in one of my first slides. And what we could also demonstrate with our European study, with our multi-center study, and especially in our center, this procedure acts significantly in satiety, not in restriction or in, in other uh, changes of your physiology. There are several studies that brought this product on the market and showed really a significant improvement in weight loss. But also, when we collect our data, it is, it is really interesting to see which patients group are most beneficial for. And it's not the patient group less than 30 BMI, and it's not the patient group above 40 BMI. So as you can see, the, the group who uh, benefits most from the total body weight is uh, the group after six months with a body mass index in between 30 to 35, if you speak just from the body mass. But in principle, and I will mention it later, you need the brain of the patient to have really success. You need the brain that the patient is able to cope with the satiety field. And when we have our faculty dinner tonight, we realize that this is extremely difficult even if we are full, we still can go for a dessert. And this is challenging for especially those patients who are driven with this hormonal and uh, neurohormonal problem. The European multi-center study, the MALPA study, was uh, conducted in Netherlands, Austria, Spain, and could show a significant difference in between the control group and the study group, which is important to demonstrate that if you give your patient a device that helps him to cope with, you will have a significant better success and outcome compared to those who are struggling without help. And I could show you a lot of other figures, I do not want to bore you, but the total 
body weight difference is uh, more than 5% in between the control group and, and the study group. And in addition, all the data shows that you will not have a 100% success rate. The procedure. We act on the funders as, when we come back to the philosophy, as the center of our satiety signal and we act on the antrum to keep the food longer in the stomach. We did our radiographies. It mimics a, a, a sleeve, but it is not. The mechanism is absolutely not a restrictive procedure. The patient can eat everything. And this is a message that you have to, to give your patient. I'm doing this procedure since uh, 2011, and I started here to get in this device. And meanwhile, we have really a, a, a huge number of, of patients that are really handful selected, and it is a permanent mechanism. So the patients, even after five years, give you the feedback, I am full earlier. And you can bring back your obese patients to an overweight state. And at the end of the day, you have to discuss with your patient. You have to talk. Am I a good patient? Yes. If I really want to change my lifestyle and I need some help, I need some assistance to be full earlier. And that is the key of success in this kind of procedure. Thank you.